Hi, I'm Kei Choi. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. I first got into films when I was in around 8th grade. That's when I really started paying attention to things like cinematography and screenplays and acting. And I love following along on award season with the Golden Globes and the Oscars and all of that. So today I thought I would share my top 10 films. I have ranked them from 10 to 1, so this will be like a countdown, but it was really hard to choose that order. And there are so many other films that I have left out of this list. List, but for now, here are my top 10 films of all time. What is happening to me? The answer is out there, Neo. It's the question that drives us. What is the Matrix? I am not the biggest fan of sci-fi or action movies. I actually fell asleep for a few minutes while watching Mad Max Fury Road, which is like the action movie of all action movies, but The Matrix is definitely an exception. These intelligent machines and humankind have had a war and the machines have won and now the humans have been trapped and living in a simulated world called The Matrix. And that simulated world is basically how the world was in 1999 and it's like what you and I would be experiencing just everyday life and what we know of the real world has been taken over by machines, it's been destructed and there are some humans who are like refugees and rebels against these machines. The main character who is played by Keanu Reeves decides to leave the Matrix, which is the simulated world, comfortable, whatever he's always known, and enter the real world and then the Matrix is actually a trilogy, so there are three films and it just goes over that conflict between the machines and the humans. I remember the first time I watched this film, it was with my brother and my parents and we went to the movie theaters and I got so sucked into this world. And for a long time, the uh, bullet time scene when Keanu Reeves dodges the bullets, that became super popular. People would always try to imitate that. So although this is number 10 on my list, it did have a pretty big impact on my life, I guess. That sounds a bit dramatic but I think it changed the way that I saw sci-fi. And I actually read an article recently saying that there is a high chance that we are currently living in a simulation like The Matrix, which I don't really buy, but it is kind of scary to think of that. Where am I? Some anonymous motel room. Memento is one of those films that got me more into films. I was probably in my early teens when I saw it, so I hadn't seen a movie like that before. It's a psychological thriller directed by Christopher Nolan, who is the same director who did Interstellar, The Dark Knight, Inception, so you can see that intensity and the darkness in this film. And besides the main character, Leonard, who is played by Guy Pearce, it also stars Carrie Ann Moss and Joe Pantoliano, who were in The Matrix as well. And Guy Pearce's character is is trying to solve the mystery of who murdered his wife, but he had this trauma in his past and he has short-term memory loss now. So he has to remember things through Polaroids, tattoos, notes, and um, the film is really cool because it starts in different parts um, of the timeline and they kind of meet in the middle and you see what happens. So you identify with the main character's short-term memory loss because you don't have the full picture at once, uh, but you start to learn more information as the film goes on. It really engrosses you the first time you watch it, like any good psychological thriller will, and I think, in my opinion, it gets better when you watch it again and again because then you can pick up on little details that you didn't see the first time around. And that was when my parents drove all the way down from Michigan to see me play the game. And did I cry? No, no. No! No! And you know why? No. Because there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! No crying! A League of Their Own focuses on two sisters who are in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, which was this baseball league formed in World War II because the men were off at war, so they created a baseball league for women. It stars Gina Davis, and uh, Tom Hanks is the coach of the team that she is on, the Rockford Peaches. It also has Madonna, which I thought was super random when I was a kid, and her character is best friends with Rosie O'Donnell's character, and they're really funny. This movie has a special place in my heart because we had the VHS of it. We probably still have it. And there was a period of my life when I feel like it was just always on repeat at my house. There's a lot of drama that goes down between the two sisters, but in the end, it's a real feel-good movie. In my opinion, a classic role for Tom Hanks and a classic American film. To what? What? Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? Oh, 
Excuse me, Your Honor. Two youths. My Cousin Vinny is a comedy from the 90s. It stars Joe Pesci, Ralph Macchio, who is the guy from the Karate Kid movies, and Marissa Tomei, who actually won an Academy Award for Supporting Actress in this film. And I don't know the exact numbers on this, but from what I know, it's really hard for a comedy to be nominated or even win any Academy Award, so it's very impressive. In the movie, Ralph Macchio plays this teenager who I think is driving cross-country with his friend, and they become the mistaken suspects of a murder case. Ends up calling up his cousin Vinny, who is a lawyer, but he's actually just a personal injury lawyer. He's never had any trial experience. Basically, he's an amateur. And he's not who you would typically want representing you in a murder trial. But obviously, that's where the comedy comes from, and uh, Vinny gets super creative, and it's just a really funny movie. Just think you need to watch it for yourself. I mean, this, this is unbelievable. There's no city like this in the world. You're in love with a fantasy. I'm in love with you. If you love books and art and Paris, then you will definitely love Midnight in Paris. It's about this guy named Jill. His name is pronounced Gil with a hard G. I was saying Jill because there's a French person in the movie who pronounces his name Jill, so I was saying Jill instead of Gil. Okay, moving on. He's played by Owen Wilson, and he is a Hollywood screenwriter engaged to Inez, who is played by Rachel McAdams. And they are in Paris, um, just on vacation with Inez's parents. And Jill is very jaded by Hollywood, and even though he is a very successful screenwriter, it's just not doing it for him. So he's working on his first novel, which is about a guy who owns a nostalgia shop, basically like an antique shop. There's just a lot of tension between him and Inez because she is a bit more materialistic and likes the finer things in life, and she doesn't know why he's focusing his energies on this novel. He gets drunk one night and wanders around Paris, sits on these steps, and an old car uh, from the 20s pulls up and he goes in and it takes him back in time and he does that repeatedly for a few nights in a row and he meets people like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Picasso, Salvador Dali, Ernest Hemingway, just all of those creatives who lived in Paris in the 20s. It's really fun to see those people uh, brought to life on the screen and it's just such a magical movie and has a good message at the end and I mean it's set in Paris so it's just beautiful. I actually went to the steps uh, that Owen Wilson sat on for those scenes in the film, and I will link that vlog up there uh, when I last went to Paris, so you can see that. No, da domani ce lo scriviamo anche noi, guarda. Chi ti è antipatico a te? A me i visigoti. E da domani ce lo scriviamo. Vietato l'ingresso ai ragni e ai visigoti. Oh. I man not the scale with TV go to bus Life is beautiful is beautiful. It's an Italian film and it's set in Italy in the 30s and 40s where a man named Guido becomes um, captured. He and his family become captured by the Nazis and taken to a concentration camp. He gets separated from his wife, but he ends up in the same camp as his son, and instead of telling him what's actually going on, he creates these backstories and games to protect his son from the horrible situation that they're actually in. So it's ultimately a story of a father's love, and it just balances the comedy and the tragedy so well. The comedy obviously comes from him creating these fun games for his son to enjoy, and then the tragedy is the actual situation that they're in. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards, and it won three of them. And the Oscar goes to... My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, thank you. I think Forrest Gump is on many people's top 10 movies list. Uh, it stars Tom Hanks again, and it is another classic American film because it includes so much of American history. Forrest Gump, who is played by Tom Hanks, is not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he lives this extraordinary life and does these extraordinary things, and they are all set in this backdrop of iconic moments in American history. Like, he meets Elvis, he 
fights in the Vietnam War. He is there when the Watergate scandal is occurring. I love that they use real historic footage and then just add Forrest into the scenes because it's really comical to see how he's involved in all of these historic moments. It's also very quotable. My friend and I say Forrest Gump quotes all the time. Um, it is a long movie, two and a half hours long, but it's worth it. You won't be paid as a regular cop, but there's a bonus involved. So what do I do? I have been a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan since I was like six years old and I saw Titanic in theaters. The Departed is actually based on a Japanese film and it's about two cops. One of them is undercover in the mob and then the other one is an informant to the mob. So they're working against each other here and it kind of goes back and forth and you piece things together. I love the pace of this film because it really picks up as you move along and at the end, like one of the last scenes, you're just like... And while I am a huge Leo fan, my favorite character in the film is the one played by Mark Wahlberg because he is just a badass. Like Mark Wahlberg himself is a badass in real life all the time, but his character also a badass. I also like the Boston accent, so that's a plus. Do you like apples? Yeah. I got a number. How do you like them apps? <laughs> <laughs> Another film set in Boston, Goodwill Hunting, is the film that put Matt Damon and Ben Affleck on the map. They won um, an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for this film. It's a drama, but there are a lot of funny and touching moments as well. Matt Damon's character, Will Hunting, is this 20-something year old, and he is a genius, but he's just never done anything with that in his life. So he is working as a janitor at MIT, and this professor posts this impossible math problem, but Will solves it, uh, but he does it like during his shift or whatever, so no one knows that it was him. But anyway, I don't want to get too much into it, but he ends up getting into this gang fight, and instead of getting arrested and going to jail, he has to do these therapy sessions with um, Robin Williams' character. So the film really centers in on that relationship between Will Hunting and Robin Williams' character, Sean McGuire, who is his therapist. And I see it as coming of age because you see Will Hunting grow as a person. The thing I love about the film is that although Will Hunting is this extraordinary character with an extraordinary mind, he has this ordinary life and the film just focuses on those ordinary and relatable aspects and uh, the things that he still has to learn as a person. Do I know you? Do you ever shop at Barnes & Noble? Sure. That's it! Yeah? I've seen you, man! Book slave there for like... five years now? Oh. My favorite movie of all time is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And in this film, there is this new technology that allows people to get parts of their memory erased. And this girl, Clementine Krasinski, who is played by Kate Winslet, she was actually nominated for an Academy Award for her performance in this film because it was amazing. She decides to get her memories of her ex-boyfriend, Joel Parrish, played by Jim Carrey, erased. And when Jim Carrey's character finds out, he does the same, and it kind of just goes between a pre operation, post-operation, uh, you again have to piece the pieces together. And there are some other like love triangle and unrequited love situations going on, so a lot to uh, keep your attention. And it is a story about love, but it's also about human nature and how you sometimes can't help you know, what you love and who you love, no matter how hard you try or interfere with it. I think the movie's so creative because it includes this crazy technology where you can get your memories erased, which is unrealistic, but at the same time kind of believable. Also just at the heart of it, the idea of wanting to have certain memories erased is very relatable, so that's what makes the film great, is that it's relatable but has this creative twist. This movie has been my favorite for a long time and I think it might be, you know, my favorite movie forever, but we'll see uh, if anything takes that spot. That is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what your favorite movies are. I'd love to get film recommendations, and let me know if any of the movies I listed are also in your top 10 list. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!